Hello everyone and welcome to uh, something a little bit different uh, this week. Yes, we are playing Kerbal Space Program, but we aren't going to be going to, uh, to space. So it's just a Kerbal program, I, I guess. But worry not, we will still be building and flying some kind of uh, flying contraption. And you, know, you can see we're constructing it here. Um, people seem to respond pretty well to my construction time lapses that would be placed at the beginning of my videos in my Laon Aerospace series. So I thought that, you know, given the unique design of this aircraft, I thought it'd be kind of cool to put a time lapse in this video too. Um, now we're not constructing anything amazing at face value, it's just a simple passenger jet, but I wanted it to accomplish two things. First, I wanted it to be able to cruise at supersonic speed. I initially uh, went with the lofty ambitions of hypersonic flight, which for those unaware is Mach 5 and above versus just Mach 1 and above for supersonic. Uh, but while that would absolutely be possible in Kerbal Space Program, the aircraft would basically spend its entire flight engulfed in flame. So, you know, I don't really think it'd be that it would look too great uh, given that this is a passenger aircraft aircraft. Uh, especially with that kind of stubby, the stumpy appearance of the Mark III cockpit, you'd want something a bit more pointy, I guess, for it to look <laughs> believable. Uh, also the parts I'm using, uh, namely the elevator flaps, uh, they're not built to withstand the heating of hypersonic flight. So, supersonic it is, but on the upper end of supersonic. I'm, I'm, this aircraft can, well, I aimed for, and now I've done it, I can confirm, that this craft will have a cruising speed of around Mach 3. Anyway, uh, like I said, speed was the first objective, but the second, and you know, hopefully from the title and thumbnail, uh, the second objective will hopefully be clear to you. Uh, it's to have a box wing design, and here you can see me kind of constructing the curve there to uh, add the upper part of the box wing. Uh, and by box wing, <laughs> I'm referring to the closed wing nature of this aircraft swings, which as you can see are non-planar and they close back in on themselves and reattach to the fuselage. We kind of have a swept back wing at the front and then a swept, you know, an inverted swept back wing um, towards the back, which is generally how kind of theorized uh, box wing aircraft would would look kind of a bit so not you know not like a biplane structure because you know you don't want to compromise the lift generated by the lower wing but that's a whole other thing anyway um these do exist i just lost my train of thought <laughs> these kinds of aircraft they do exist in real life but nowhere near to this scale they're largely just limited to light and experimental aircraft the key feature of the closed wing design um probably rather self-explanatory, uh, is the fact that there are no wingtips. Uh, this resolves the wasteful effects of uh, wingtip vortices, which occur at the ends of regular wings when traveling through the air and form, you know, a, a very ma a major component of wake turbulence. And uh, they're associated with a phenomenon known as induced drag. Uh, a closed wing obviously removes this effect because there are no wingtips. Real Engineering did a nice little summary of uh, what these, the, what these wingtip vortices are, if you're interested in knowing about this it is in the description if you'd like to watch that um but yeah additionally the increased lifting area means that the wings can be shorter and they generally produce an increased amount of lift this is actually more significant than you might think you see the colossal a airbus a380 which is currently the largest uh, passenger jet in the world um, it's actually more inefficient than it otherwise could be uh, because the wings have to be below 80 meters in order to uh, operate at most airports but given that closed wings can be shorter aircraft uh, even larger than the A380 could be possible if we're still kind of conforming to the 80 meter standard by that point. Uh, also, there is something to be said about the enhanced structural strength of having a closed wing system. So you see me doing a, a little test flight just here. I've got those rear fins there just as a placeholder. Uh, they will get replaced as well as that front K and R. They just slapped on any old elevator just to add, just to make sure it would work before, you know, making something a little bit more cosmetically pleasing. One thing I wanted to establish with test flights is to make sure this thing could take off kind of below 120 meters per second because that was Concorde's takeoff speed. So anything higher than that, I feel like it would be a bit unrealistic. So that was the speed I was going for and we did achieve that. Uh, anyway, back to uh, talking about the uh, the whole concept of a closed wing design. Uh, there are drawbacks as well, and overall it is still debated just how much benefit a closed wing system can offer given, you know, the R&D and all that required to... Uh, to develop a, such a system, see the Skylon for uh, another sort of example of that where R&D probably trumps the actual benefits. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's debatable just how much closed wing system can offer. One of the main drawbacks is the fact that uh, the surface drag may be slightly increased. This is especially true for KSP. There aren't really any benefits to a closed wing in this game other than, you know, 
uh, aesthetics, which, you know, is an important thing to consider, but it's it's a very superficial consideration nonetheless. Um, uh, the other big thing that's holding it back right now is the fact that there's a, there's a huge structural demand to a closed wing system to the scale of a passenger airline, and it's not really something that modern engineering has overcome just yet. Uh, the F-22, um, the material used to build that is kind of that sort of thing. That sort of material is being looked into by Lockheed Martin to construct a passenger jet scale closed wing aircraft but so far they're all concepts and designs nothing has actually been built so far but maybe one day hopefully uh here we are by the way on the runway it's all complete we can do some uh we can do a little flight i thought i'd fly us to the desert because you know i just felt like doing that so we can get ready to uh launch this thing now it's gonna ascend using all three of those sr-71 engines and then once we're at cruising speed and at cruising altitude we can shut down uh two of them or i get four of them and just have two running just to keep us on a maintained speed but not to increase any faster because we don't need to and we don't want to keep on accelerating because then we'll just overheat and that's a that's a whole other can of worms so um, I guess I could go into actually why I felt like I needed to build a passenger aircraft. I did mention that it was because I wanted to try something with the boxed wing design and all that. And I thought that would be kind of nice. I, I really I saw a couple of box wings on the subreddit a while ago. And I thought that looks really cool. I'd love to give that a go. So maybe I'll build an SS2 with this sort of wing configuration as well. But right now I wanted to you know build a hypersonic, not a hypersonic, no, no, a supersonic. Oh, we did go over that earlier. A supersonic transport plane because, you know, I've always really liked the Concorde. I'd love to give it a, my own little crack at it. Obviously, this is not a good design for real life. But just in-game, it's, no, it's nice to design a, a supersonic passenger jet. And actually, when I was first playing the game, or a younger player, before I made videos and all that, uh, one of my favourite things to do was just building passenger aircraft that could fly really fast and just fly them around curb him. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, that was a bit of a divergence. One of the reasons I wanted, one of the big reason I wanted to build a passenger aircraft is because I thought I'd be a cool little mini series, um, which I've decided to have the working title of Minma Space Hotel and Casino, um, which is a bit of an homage to the uh, the own New Arctic Monkeys album uh, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. I thought I had a nice little ring to it, basically establishing a Minma surface base, but for tourists. So it's going to have full hotel features. It's going to have a pool, a casino, hotel. You know, I did. I did mention those things, uh, and some sort of uh, some sort of fully reusable transport system to get them there. So probably an SSTO. So maybe I could go with another box wing design for the SSTO that will get passengers there. And obviously there'll need to be some sort of infrastructure to transfer them from the SSTO into the hotel and obviously between the hotel modules without them having to disembark the vessel because obviously in this game tourists can't go on EVA. So that's a uh, that's something to overcome. So I think this has potential, and we could even expand the base to have like another commercial element. You know like a mining unit or something the reason for this is because Lown aerospace the series this is the same save file as Lown aerospace but the series itself where we unlock the tech tree and do all the science that is finished so the business you know we we fulfilled all of our business goals we, we no one wants to hire us anymore because you know, they're like well you've done all the science we've got all the data we need your company is now obsolete but we you know we want to keep on building rockets we need some sort of way of sustaining ourselves so if you want you can give us a give to me on patreon that's in the description as well but that's probably not going to be enough to support a fully fledged space program, to be honest. Even as, as grateful as I am for you guys' Patreon donations, it's not going to be able to fund um, moon rockets. So we need to have some sort of other business on the side. So I thought Bimba Space Hotel and Casino. Tourists can come and pay exorbitant amount of money. Um, they can they can stay at the hotel and we can continue ge generating wealth that way to fund our space program. But I thought, you know, our guests are going to be coming from all over the world. I don't want to make them fly on on British Airways or pff, God forbid American Airways uh, to get to the actual SSTO spaceport so we'll have our own uh, terrestrial aircraft that can fly them from wherever they need to come from to the main Kerbal Space Center where we can launch them off in an SSTO to Minmus so this is this is the ship that's what's gonna fulfill the role so this can land pretty much anywhere I did test it I'll probably throw the clip in somewhere um, this thing can do aquatic landings as well thanks to the fact that the engines are mounted below the upper wing. Uh, when this thing is in the water, it means the engines are very, very clear of the actual water level itself. And given that this aircraft is very buoyant because most of it is just empty space, there isn't a lot of fuel in it relative to its size, it floats pretty nicely actually. So I could even adapt this design and take it to lathe and keep it as like a terrestrial lathe base as well, much like the seaplane I made in my last 
um, the last time I made a plane that went to Leith. I do have plans for another Leith seaplane base, basically like a floating base on Leith, uh, but it's also an aircraft that can fly around in different biomes, land in the sea, but it's huge. It's going to have a deployable submarine that can be piloted and re -dock. It's going to have rovers. Um, I've, it's just like in my head at the moment. I haven't designed anything for it, but it's something that I popped into my head. I was like, that'll be a cool thing to do. So, you know, maybe that will be something I'll do in the future. But uh, yeah, where are we now? Oh yes, uh, now I remember. I was going to say something at the time when it happened, but then, you know, I was I was in the middle of a train of thought and I tend to just sort of start talking with my eyes closed and not really paying attention to the footage, but I heard the audio cue on the screen on my headphones. I guess I must it must have happened, but I thought I'd just test out the maximum speed of this thing. I had no intention of ever taking it to maximum speed because, well, you can see, you saw what happened. Um, things blew up. One of the air, air brakes uh, went as well as uh, a couple of the elevators went. And as I said, that was one of the reasons why I didn't go with a hypersonic design because, you know, the elevators on this craft can't really withstand hypersonic speeds, as I as I've demonstrated and proven to you. So that's why that's why this is just a purely supersonic craft. And obviously, the air brakes in KSP are not very good at dealing with heat anyway. Here's a little uh, showcase of its maneuverability, even with um, missing elevators. I think it is a pretty maneuverable craft overall. Not maneuverable enough, though, to uh, to land at the desert runway. I mean, it wasn't the best descent that I've ever done in my life, to be honest. As you can see, we hit the ground quite hard. Still not quite sure why the uh, the landing gear, gear um, didn't explode from overstress, because there was no, like, cheats enabled. So I guess, you know, God was smiling on this day. But you can see we're kind of hop, skipping and jumping all the way down the desert runway, and we ended up going over the end of it. So there go my dreams of maybe having the spaceport for Minmus Base Hotel and Casino at the... Uh, the desert airfield maybe we'll just do it at the Kerbal Space Center but uh, I think that pretty much wraps this video up to be honest I'll do a quick showcase of the uh, the logo for the hotel and casino Jebediah can show it off there with his flag but that's the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it uh, there are links on screen to some more videos if you like those as well as subscribe and my patron as I mentioned earlier as well as that there is a uh, Twitter in the in the description as well as discord if you like that sort of thing but that's it thank you for watching